Anchors up, sells at full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well, Jared. Doing pretty well. How are you doing today? Uh, you know what? I'm doing okay. We, we're we in week two. We're in week two. We got a new tradition, good tradition. I'm supposed to say that before, but hey, maybe the new traditions that I say it after. You know, I like, you know, I lied, Jared. I'm, I'm exhausted. I've <laughs> been traveling the last jet few days, get, getting, getting up way, way too early. Kyle's but a jet setter. That's the only, we're here. We are, we are here though. We are here with another know your enemy episode. This time we are talk, going to be talking about the Broncos of Western Michigan. The Broncos indeed. Um, the Broncos come into this game. Oh, and one. Let me switch the thing over. They, um, second year coach Lance Taylor, uh, last year they went four and eight, including going three and five in the Mac. Um, the spread for this game is Ohio state minus 38 and a half. I, I want to point out something, Jared, cause it's the first time seeing this. This looks like a hockey rink. <laughs> I, I noticed my uh hold on. I noticed that my the the lines that I use to <laughs> that I use to make sure everything's lined up is uh hold on. There we go. That that's uh, embarrassing. Okay. All right. That's embarrassing. <laughs> but yeah, with those lines, it looked a lot like a hockey rink. Now those are my guidelines that I'm supposed to turn off before the podcast starts. Very professional here, Jared. We're very, very professional. professional. And, and also, what fucking ice arena? I shouldn't be cussing this early in the show. Is black? No, you shouldn't. What? I've heard of black ice before, but yada 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 yada. <laughs> you mean a hockey rink? But they were straight. They were. No, no, no. You have you. Have you seen the the graphs we have for like sloop cats or for um sloop picks that have all the lines on it? Oh my god, if you could have seen the guy and you went we're we're talking about Western Michigan. These are the Broncos. Um struggling team. Um I would say a team better than Akron. I mean, that is reflected in the spread. Ohio State's spread is 11 points, 12 points. It was 50 and a half last week, right? Not 49. Um, reg- uh, 12 points lower than it was last week. Um, I don't see a ton of difference personally. I don't know, Kyle. What do you think about the Western Michigan Broncos? Uh, yeah, I, I, I really... I really don't see much of a difference here. Maybe maybe a little bit better defense than what we saw with with Akron here, but offensively I didn't didn't really see anything that really stood out to me here. Uh I mean it's it, it, it was only one week and uh they played they played Wisconsin, lost 28 to 14. Which but, is a pretty good outing for them and or a bad outing for Wisconsin, depending upon how you choose to look at it. But yeah, the. Uh, you know, between Western Michigan playing well last week against Wisconsin and Ohio State starting slow last week in the first half against Akron. Maybe we see Ohio State come out a little bit more motivated this week. You might see Ohio State jump on Western Michigan more than they jumped on Akron. You know, it's no longer Will Howard and Quinshawn Judkins and Caleb Downs' first game in the shoe. You know, they've played some other teams. They can shake that rust off. And again, you know, learned maybe a bit of a lesson as far as, let's not also forget um, J.J. Smith. He had some serious first drive rust. So, you know, Ohio State comes into this game. Maybe they're a little bit more focused, a little bit more ready. You know, 
the motivation might be a little higher at the beginning of the game simply because this team did kind of test Wisconsin last week and Ohio State did start slow last week against Akron. So add that, you know, first game jitters out of the way. We might see Ohio State, despite the fact that I do believe Western Michigan is a better team than Akron. You might see Ohio State jump on top of Western Michigan faster than we saw against Akron. Now, does that turn into more points? Does that mean that Ohio State will get a, you know, another 52 to seven, six, 52 to six victory like last week? Could they surpass that? Not necessarily like. You know, Ohio State had two defensive touchdowns in last week's game. That's not something even against a bad team that you can count on to replicate. Um, I don't know. I, I I think we might see Ohio State jump on Western Michigan faster in this game than we saw against Akron. But at the same time, that won't necessarily translate into a more decisive final score. Am I making sense? Yeah, no, it, it definitely definitely are here. I I hope to see a little bit more a little bit more of a um ground and pound type of game here. Uh looking looking at last weekend, Ohio State rushed for 170 yards. I was hoping to see more more than over that 200 mark there I agree. against against Akron. Western Michigan led up 196 yards last weekend to Wisconsin, three touchdowns on the ground. Again, I hope I hope to see Ohio State surpass that, at least yeah. in yardage, against Western Michigan here. I agree. Um, you know, we talked about this in Scarlet and Grade on Monday. Um, was not excited about Ohio State's performance from an offensive line standpoint, specifically, maybe more specifically from a run blocking standpoint. You know, we will see Will Howard run more this year, but that doesn't mean we're going to waste a ton of those body hits against Mac schools. Yeah. Um, and, and, and he did. And he did really well. He yeah, yeah. he only he only ran when he needed to. He on, on the paper here, he ran for, uh, he ran four times here. Now I don't know how many of those were kneels or whatever, but None. yeah, he 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 run he runs when he None. needs to. None. Okay. Uh, uh, Brown took the the kneel in the uh, at the end of the game last week. Okay. He is going to have to save us at some point this season. Maybe not. I'm going to say he's going to need to. He will. He is going to save us. OK. Not necessarily like. I He's a facilitator. He's a point guard. If Ron Harper passing to Michael Jordan so Michael Jordan can take the game winning shot counts as saving us. Save us, Ron Harper, I guess. Like. To me, that's his job. You got a bunch of talented dudes out there. Get them the ball. Play point guard. We don't need you to score. You know, get those clutch first. He will get He's not going to have a drive, in my opinion, in a combative game this year, late, you know, a game winning drive that is all him. Mm -hmm. But he is going to get like he's not going to have like touchdowns or drives that are like save us Howard touchdowns or save us Howard drives. But we will get like some save us Howard first downs. That will then yeah. keep those drives alive so that he can get the ball to Emeka Abuka and Emeka Abuka can shake a block and make a big play. To me, that's his job. To me, that is his job. Mm -hmm. All right. So some some players here to kind of keep a 
just notable players here. We have it on our board here. If you're watching, watching us on our video on YouTube, uh, quarterback Caden Wolf uh, lead, leads this offense here. Aiden Pretty Wolf, efficient. A plus. Well, a, an A name. I'm going to give yeah. him an A name. A, a pretty efficient quarterback, 12 for 18. Uh, he did throw the one interception against Wisconsin, but uh, yeah, going, going, up, uh, going up against any Wisconsin team, you're you're going to struggle trying to move the ball and stopping, <laughs> stopping Wisconsin from running all over you as well. But 12 for 18, not bad percentage wise, but yeah, it, it appeared like everything was just in front of the Wisconsin defense and Western Michigan just couldn't really move the ball as well as they need to, to, and to try to beat Wisconsin in the end. But yeah, Hayden Wolf, the the quarterback here, uh, running back Jalen Buckley, uh, at 64 yards and two touchdowns. Should be noted real quick that Hayden Wolf is one of a few players on this team, uh, from old dominion. Yes. Yep. Uh, again, Jalen Buckley, 64 yards, two touchdowns uh, for for the Broncos. And their main their main wide receivers each had two catches. Uh, Malik and Anthony each had two catches each. Uh, wasn't really as impactful as they was Western Michigan was hoping they would be here. Uh, and then the round out the offense here is names to to know here for this Wisconsin offense, it, not Wisconsin, Western Michigan offense <laughs> is uh, Blake, Bo- but little Blake Bosma, who also had two catches as well. Yeah. And, and I think one of the strengths you'll see from this Western Michigan team, <laughs> those are tough last names. Good job, Kyle. I'm, I'm not saying you did it right, but you, you put up a good effort. I, I'm the last person to check you on whether they were right or not. Like, I am not the bath of the the back of the math book. I do not have the correct answers. Uh, defensively, as Kyle pointed out earlier, this is a uh, an aspect of the team where we will see a bit of an upgrade from Akron. Um, they have a really good pair of linebackers, uh, Donald Willis and Boone uh, Bonima. Uh, Isaiah Green is a really good defensive lineman up front, and. Uh, I put Isaiah green twice, uh, on the, the defensive back is supposed to be, uh, someone else. I actually, put, I'm gonna fix it. I'm gonna fix it. Kyle, you talk, I'm fixing the graphic. You went, never mind. <laughs> yeah. I got it. Uh, Bahal Cone is the defensive back. Yeah. He, he, he ties with the, he ties with the team with 10 tackles against Wisconsin last last weekend here. Uh, Donald Willis is the other player linebacker who also had 10 tackles. Both both of those players ended up having two uh, breakups as well. Uh, the other linebacker here, uh, Boone Boonema, Boone Boonema, maybe, maybe. No, I, I went with Bonema, but Bonema. Uh, had nine tackles as well. And then the roundup, Isaiah Green there uh, on the defensive line there uh, had the, I think the only sack that Western Michigan had against Wisconsin. Uh, don't I believe it was just, that was the only sack there, but I might have missed one there. Yeah. Uh, Lance Taylor, uh, as I briefly mentioned before in his second year, at Western Michigan, uh, previous to Western Michigan, he uh, was the offensive coordinator at Louisville, and he also was a running back coach at Notre Dame from 2019 to 2021. Kyle, here is your own local flavor. There's an important Columbus tie with Lance Taylor, and you will never ever ever guess this what is his ties to columbus ohio what is his ties to columbus 
Ohio. Yep. I'm going to guess because because don't you don't you be googling now. Don't my don't anyone up. be hey, googling hey, hey, now. Hey 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 hey, my hands are up. Hand, hand check. No no one so, in the chat either. So because because of the way that you're phrasing this, Jared. Yeah, because yeah. of the way you're phrasing yeah, this. Yeah yeah. I'm I'm going to say the destroyers. Oh, you googled it before. You cheated. You cheated. There's no way my in hell. Hands, my hands were up. You're, but what were you were doing up. before? I'm reading what chat's saying here. So. You're such a cheat. There's no way in hell you got that. There's no the way, way in it's hell. The, it's it's the way you were phrasing it. The way the way you were saying you'll he never cheated. guess this coming. Spike never says guess. you cheated too. Spike said you cheated right. too. You, cause you were, you were, you were after, while I was talking, while I was asking the question, I saw you typing. You just got there. Kyle, we, we have look it up, Kyle, look it up for a reason. You're very efficient at getting to the answer quickly. You <laughs> cheated. You, yeah, that's right. He played for the first, want, but. he played for, I, I played, listen, I played Halo with you back when we uh, had to play on the same system on the same tv and you're a screen looker there i said it your screen i don't looker. know where this is all coming from all right i guess he did i guess all of the all these years of your uh yeah getting your butt whooped yeah that both, is, is both, true. In, both is on true. the video game side and in the sloop picks here is all coming coming forward now so. hey i tied with you once <laughs> once I, out of how many <laughs> Doesn't matter. I think it may at least uh, once. It does matter. It, it does matter. <laughs> <laughs> it it, it does may have been multiple ties. Um, yeah, he was uh, played for the first instance because uh, the Columbus Destroyers did come back for a brief moment. Um, okay. But he played for the first instance of the Columbus Destroyers uh, back in 2005. He also played for a, for a college team called Alabama. Am I pronouncing that right? But but but, but most Maybe. importantly, he played for the Columbus Destroyers in 2005, the Arena League football team. Probably not. I'm probably not pronouncing when, it right. When did what year was it that um that Appalachian State beat Michigan. What year was that? 2007? 2007, okay. 2006. All right, all right. Never mind. 2007. Yeah, no, he was not on that team, or rather okay. he did not coach on that team. Um, that would be a that would be an amazing, that, that would be more amazing than the Columbus Destroyers. Yeah, all right. Kyle, you what else is amazing? Our Patreon, patreon.thesloopcast.com. If you want to avoid stupid, ugly, no fun ad breaks, you can join our Patreon for as little as $3 a month. Uh, and if you all, you can also support us. Kyle, show everyone your, your lovely Sloopcast merch t-shirt. Uh, it's meant to, it's made to look like the, uh, not the old, old Columbus Crew logo, but the middle old Columbus Crew logo. You can go buy that. It's got the 15. That's the year we started the podcast. You can buy that at merch.thesloopcast.com. Um, but yeah, you can avoid those ad breaks by going to patreon.thesloopcast.com and find all of our other links at just thesloopcast.com. Here's that ad break now. All right, Kyle, we are back. That was that was a decent transition. I like it wasn't a 10 out of 10. It wasn't a 10 out of 10, but I think it was like an 8-5. All right. Fair enough. All right. Let us let's get into some predictions, shall we? Let's get into some predictions for sure. Now, Kyle, we have a guest picker this week. Yes, tell us about this this uh this guest picker of ours. Uh he is a uh, Sloop Cat, which is what we call our Patreon supporters. Uh, he, he goes by the name Odin. And he is, you haven't seen him type yet, but he is in the podcast studio right now. Uh, he might, he might be working out. He might just be listening. Um, but, but he is in the chat. I have risen. There he is. 
Odin is in fact with us. Kyle, are you uh, are you going to read Odin's responses as we go? Yes, sir. All right. First up under predictions, we used to call these the sloop sayers. A, a, a very clever name, I'll say. Uh, maybe we go back to that. I don't know. Uh, Ohio State player to watch. I'm going with Josh Fryer. I miss the music. Yeah, me too. YouTube be YouTube and though can't really do that anymore. Unfortunately, um, Josh Fryer, Josh Fryer uh, is my player to watch. Um, he had um, a, a rough start to his season. You know, I think there was a lot of hype to, you know, him taking a big leap this year, his second year starting, you know, he has that sort of grown ass man, you know, uh, card in his back pocket. So, you know, we, we're really hoping to see a big move forward for him. Didn't really see it against Akron. We're going to hope to see it this week. I want to see Josh Fryer lay some dudes out. Uh, you know, this is going to be a better defense with Western Michigan than what we saw against Akron. I want Josh Fryer to rise to the occasion and decleat some dudes. Yeah, I have I have Judkins. At, I'm going with Judkins for two year two years, two weeks in a row here. Uh I, I mentioned at the start I, I want to see Ohio State being able to run over over this Bronco defense here. I want to see more carries and I want to see more consistency. And I think that's going to be the key thing with the offensive line is consistency, yeah, being yeah. able to to block well. I want to see what we saw in the second half, but throughout the game here. So I got I got Judkins. Uh really should be the offensive line, but I'm going with Judkins as my player to watch. Yeah, I mean the answer is always the offensive line. I'm I'm saving those for the tough games though. So yeah. I'm not saying it all year. All right. All right. Noted. Noted. What right. does Odin and say? Odin. Odin simply has down Sony Styles. There we go. All right. Enemy player to watch. I got Jalen Buckley. Uh, he's the lead running back on on this squad. Um, very talented guy. I really. Um, <laughs> thank you, Austin. Um, I, you know, I would say offensively, he is um, probably the player I would most keep an eye on. Um, they actually have a really good running back pair. So offensively, probably their biggest strong suit is their running back pair. I don't know how well that's going to play out for them, quite frankly, against Ohio State. The defensive line and the linebackers look to be like on top of their game last week. So I don't necessarily expect that to get a lot better this week. So everyone pray for Jalen Buckley. Uh, but yeah, he's my enemy player to watch. And mine is the linebacker, Donald Willis. Uh, if Ohio State's going to have any success running the ball, he, they've got to make sure to keep, keep Donald Willis from being able to um, make those tackles there. He, Tied for, tied with the team with ten tackles last last week against Wisconsin here, uh, and if Western Michigan is going to have any success, uh, Donald's going to have to to step up. Odin, Odin with his player player uh, player we did not mention, uh, and that is uh, running back Zahir Abdusalam. He had five carries for good running back yards. pair. He would be the second of that pair. Mm -hmm. Yep. He, he had five, five carries and 22 yards uh, last week against Wisconsin Four, fourth year at, at Western Michigan here uh, last year, last year he had 400, 470 yards and five touchdowns in the year. Uh, but yeah, as Jared said, it's a, pair of running backs that Western Michigan will use here. He matchup. Um, I have what I think is a, a newfound strength for Ohio state in their linebacking core. Um, 
I, I know Hicks had some first game issues and I'm going to chalk it up to first game issues. We don't yet know the status of Cody Simon, if he's going to be playing this year or excuse me, this week. Uh, we don't know if he's going to be playing this week. He missed last week. But Avril Reese really like, you know, took advantage of the opportunity, even if it was mostly later in the game. He had an excellent football game. Uh, Sonny Styles, of course, had an excellent football game. He, Powers got a touchdown later in the game. Really excited about the future that Ohio State's linebacking core. Like, I think we're, you know, we we had a few off years with the linebacking core. I think we're coming back in with a, you know, building off of what with Steele and everyone did last year transitioning maybe into more of an athletic phase with the linebackers. Um, I'm really excited, really excited about the future of linebacker at Ohio state. Uh, and I've already said that I think that the strength of Western Michigan is their running backs. So my key matchup, Ohio state's linebackers versus Western Michigan's running backs. All right. Uh, I believe both Oda and I picked the same here and that's the, Offensive line of Ohio State versus Western Michigan's defensive line. I put I put as well as the linebackers too because the linebackers are going to really play up a lot to try to stop Ohio State's uh, running attack here. But Odin also did say, <laughs> uh, I completely agree. Odin, I um, mentioned this just earlier. O line needs to improve to help out Judkins more. Yeah, yeah. All right, Kyle. Here it comes. The spread is 38 and a half points. Will Ohio State, in your opinion, cover? Oh, that, that is a question. Like, I've, I've looked at the past, uh, past few years of Ohio State, and they've, they haven't really done all that great especially in the um, trying to cover in in terms of teams that they should absolutely dominate. Sure. Uh, and, it, and you can't really go off of recent history with with these two teams because Ohio State's only played them once ever. You and, that was nine, and that was nine years ago. You kind of just have to look at Ohio State versus MAC teams, period. Like just yeah. generally Ohio State versus well, and, and MAC what, teams, and that's how what often I did do last, they cover? And that's what I did last week because of like the success Ohio State has had traditionally against the Mac. Uh, success against the that, spread, that, that, though. But that didn't but that didn't that didn't pan out that well. Uh, Thirty eight and a half, a lot, a lot of points, but I think Western Michigan will put up a little bit more of a of a resistance on on their defensive side there. But offensively, as I mentioned, I don't. I don't see them being able to score a lot here. Yeah, yeah. But I do think Ohio State has has the power and the defense to potentially get a shutout here. Uh, so if they can if they can get six touchdowns, seven touchdowns, yeah, I, I'll, I'll call this a I'll call this a a spread win for Ohio State. All right. Uh, I did not pick Ohio State to cover last week. I will be picking Ohio State to cover this week. Uh, 12 points lower is enough to get me on board, even though, once again, Western Michigan is a better team than Akron. I don't think they're 12 points better. Um, I I think, Kyle, I'm, I'm going to need you to not get too excited. Yep. This is the week where the punt gets returned. I'm calling that. Don't you do it. Brennan Ennis is going to house one this this week. I think, and as I stated earlier in the show, I, I think for the for the reasons I already mentioned, I think Ohio State will jump on Western Michigan a lot harder this uh, a lot harder than they did Akron. So I, I think Ohio State's going to jump on this. I think they're going to kill it, and I'm going to go with an Ohio State cover this week, even though I did not predict one last week. What does Odin say? 
Odin has Ohio State to win and cover. He has he has a final score. Nope, we're doing final scores. Yep, we might as well go right into that. Uh, he has Ohio State 59, Western Michigan 7. And I, I have I have Ohio State 10 less points there, 49 to 7. Well, this is the point in the show where I would like to point out that I was one point away from predicting last week's game correctly. But you didn't. They're closer than you. But you still didn't. You were still wrong. Just like the rest of us. Still closer than you. That's that's not the name of this game. Sure it is. <laughs> listen, listen, if you want to be a child and view things in black and white terms, that's great. I predicted 52 to seven. It was 52 to six. You know, sometimes a grown ass adult like myself views life in the gray area and can see got? that that's still a really good prediction. My score prediction, you will find out after this ad break. If you want to not hear these ads, uh, you can do so by going to patreon.thesloopcast.com. You can find the rest of our links at thesloopcast.com. Here are those ad breaks now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm on, I'm on top of my I'm on top of my tease game today. I'm on top of I'm on top of my transition game today. I took my Adderall. I'm on top of things. Two giant things of coffee and an Adderall today. I'm ready to take on the world. So is Ohio State. Ohio State's ready to take on the world. Kyle, I'm going to run back my score prediction. I'm running it back. 52 to 7. I almost got it last week. I'm going to try it again. 52 to 7. Why not 6? That's what the score was last weekend. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. Because that's what I wanted to do. So Western Michigan will get a touchdown. Yeah. Um, either in the first quarter or the fourth quarter, but definitely not in the second or third quarters. Or an Iowa touchdown. No, there will be no safeties. There will be no safeties against Ohio State. That that will not be happening. All right, Kyle, we have our final scores. It is time. Is it time? Is it time for we got Austin down in the chat? Is it time for Austin's over unders? Yes, it is. Let me let me pull that up here and I will Austin's put this in world order. famous over unders. Yes, sir. And I'm going to paste that there. All right, here we go. First one for over unders for Western hey. team up north. Austin, don't undersell yourself. You're a very important part of this failing podcast. Will Howard, first, first one here. Will Howard pass attempts. 23 and a half. Um, well, I will say he he did last weekend. Yeah, yeah. I'm just I'm just very just you double sure? checking my notes. Yep. 28, 28 attempts against Akron. Yeah. If I'm going with, if I'm going with my theme of running the ball more than, than they did against Akron, I'm going to go under. Um, I think they will run the ball a lot. I think they will put the game away a lot, but I think they're still going to mix in a fair amount of passes. 23 and a half just feels very low. And that's a great number. Again, because I think they'll get up big because I think they'll run a lot. It It, it is a good number, but it's low. I think the correct number of throws for Howard, I would put it like 25. Therefore, I will go over. All right. Uh, next one is Western Michigan team receptions. Okay. At nine and a half. They had, excuse me, they had 12 last weekend against Wisconsin. 
I mean, completing 10 passes feels like it's very achievable, even if you're a vastly overpowered football team. Do you remember how many Akron had last weekend? I do not. Won't you tell me? 18. Yeah. Does that change your, does that change your thoughts about the number of receptions Western Michigan will have? No, I mean, I, I thought 10 was very achievable. I still think 10 is very achievable. The book's out on Ohio State. It has been for years. You have to throw the ball quickly. Western Michigan will throw the ball quickly. There'll be lots of swing passes, you know, maybe some wide receiver screens. You know, they, they know they have to get rid of the ball in under two seconds more often than not. And they will do that. And that'll lead to some cheap, easy completions. I think they can hit 10. I mean, it's not like it's if this was like limited to the wide receivers, then we could have a conversation. But if you're going to give me running back receptions and tight end receptions, then yeah, yeah I'll take I'm going to over. I'm going to take the over. Yep. I'm taking the over as well. Are they throwing to their backup quarterback? Whew, man, they better. They better not run a read option and invite Jack Sawyer to hit their quarterback every time. That's all I'm saying. I see zero attempts by. By quarterbacks. On the reception side, starting defensive line, including Sawyer, JT, Tyleek and Hamilton sacks at two point five one. Uh, I'm going to go. Oh, that's a good number. Sacks are so hard to predict. Um, off of last week's five sack performance, and of course that was the entire team, not just these guys. Um, Wisconsin and a, only had one. Just just in reference, Wisconsin yeah, yeah. had one last weekend here. Yeah, it's it's hard to predict who the sacks are going to come from. It's hard to predict how long the starting crew is going to be out on the field. It's hard to predict how many plays I get. So like to Kyle's point, Kyle's been saying he thinks it's going to be like a real run heavy game. Ohio State might run the ball crazy in the first half, eat up a ton of clock. How many snaps does Western Michigan even have offensively against Ohio State's backup offense or backup? Let me let me try that whole thing over again. How many snaps will Western Michigan even have against the starting four defensive linemen against Ohio State between just first string rotation and the starters being yeah. pulled. I'm yeah. going to go under. Your, yeah, your 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 thought process is the same as mine. I'm I'm going I'm going under for that, too, because I mean, so many other players other than the other than those four can really be disruptive and get a sack in there, too. And I know. Sawyer and JT were very, very disruptive against Akron, but, but yeah, I'll, I'll go, I'll go under. 2.5 isn't a lot. It is when you limit it to four players and it's totally achievable, but sacks are, you know, you just don't necessarily, you don't necessarily know who's going to get the sacks. Okay, Quinch, that's the thing. Quinchon rushes. Quinchon rushes at eleven and a half. I'll take the over on that. I, one. Yeah, I, I think that's a really good number. I would put both of. I, I'd put both of them at thirteen. Like, if you if like if you didn't give me an over under, you just asked me to guess how many rushes between the two backs. I'd say like twenty five, twenty six. So really good number. More than 10 receptions, but less than two and a half sacks. That would be a failure. You can't say that. Depends, depends on the on air yards. The yes, exactly. How many of those areas. receptions are caught behind the line of scrimmage? How many of those receptions are caught for one or two yard gains? That's that's it's too simplistic to say that's a failure. Remember, like Akron's longest reception was to their tight end. Right. Like everything was in everything was in front of them. Or right at right at the line there. All right. Um we have 
uh, Dominic Moon and Boone total uh, combination tackles by those two linebackers at 16 and a half. So we, we didn't we didn't really talk about uh, about uh, Dominic before. Yeah, but the the linebackers uh, linebackers will really get in there and try to try to make uh, quite a bit of tackles there. And if it, my prediction were Hossie's going to run the ball a lot more, linebackers are going to get in there to get their tackle. So, I'll, yeah, I'll take the – guess I'll take the over. Uh, but the other the other linebacker, uh, Donald Willis, is going to get some, going to get some uh, tackles as well. It's, it also feels like a game where the safeties end up getting a lot of tackles as well. Like that's that's honestly one of my big hesitations here is – you know, how many tackles are the defensive backs going to end up getting because, you know, plays run to the edges or plays to get to, you know, the third, you know, the third level um, or even the second and a half level to like their quote unquote strong safety. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, that's only, you know, eight each plus one. It seems totally achievable. I'll go over. Unless we give up on the run. If we give up on the run, I I'm going to be that's a that's a failure. All right, Emeka and Tate reception yards at 131 and a half. Last last weekend, those two combined had 109. I'm going to go under. Again, kind of with my theme what I what I got going on here i'm going to i'm going to take the under for for those two combined at 131 and a half yeah i think last week we had an over under for a wide receiver and i was like dang they could get that on one play so i went with over you can't you you can't get 131 on one play um it is two players this time though so you're looking Mm -hmm. at 65 yards a piece which you know, depending upon how many snaps you end up actually snapping with those players on the field. is totally achievable. But how, you know, how, how soon are the starters pulled? I'm going to go under. Okay. I just, I, I don't necessarily see, you know, I, I said earlier, like, I, I think, I my prediction for the number of passes by Will Howard's like 25. You know, if you spread that across like four wide receivers and the running backs, it starts to get pretty watered down pretty quickly. Um I'm going to go under. If this were a more competitive game, I'd go over, but these guys might get pulled halfway through the third quarter. Okay. Uh, last one here. He has Reese tackles. All right, and plus all defensive back uh, pass deflections at seven and a half. That's a that's a very very specific uh, stat. There. Those are t- those are two specific stats combined. Mm-hmm. Reese um, had four tackles. Four tackles last weekend, just for reference. And Ohio State had three Mm -hmm. pass deflections, which is where that seven and a half is at. Yeah. um, I don't think that we'll see. I'm going to go over on this. I I think once again that we're going to see Ohio State jump on Western Michigan faster than we saw them jump on Akron, which might lead to even if not like a full line shift to the second string as quickly, we might see the second string rotate in earlier. So that means more opportunities for Reese. Plus I I think Western Michigan's going to want to, or going to be forced to, they're they're not going to run the quarterback as much, I guess is what I'm saying. Um, They're going to try to actually throw the ball more, which could lead to more pass breakups. Uh, I'm going to go over. Fair. Fair. I'm. I'll go under. Not this, a lot of deep throws. Here. Spikes. That is a good point. 
Yeah, I'm I'm gonna go on yeah, I'll go under I'll go under with with this one here. Uh again, just going statistically here. Wisconsin only had one pass deflection. Again, I don't I'm not I don't think Wisconsin has that great of cornerbacks, but still go just going off of statistically here what I'm seeing here. Yeah, Kyle, well, how many it's, tackles did and, their and third string linebacker get? And I don't and I don't think that um that Western Michigan is going to throw the ball a lot either. Like they're they're going to get down they're going to get down heavy and fast, and which would lead to more to, throwing. Not not necessarily. I mean, if the game's already put away, they they may not try to really. <laughs> they're just going to gonna get pack back it in. Yeah. Think they're just going to pack it in. Maybe, yeah, eh, maybe. All right, Kyle. Was that the last Austin that over under? That was it from Austin's over unders. All right. Uh, are there any other questions in the Ask Sloopcast mailbag you want to hit, or are we going to end the show? I'm I'm looking here. Nope. None. None for the Ohio Ohio State game here. So no. All I think, right. I think that's it. That's it. That's the end of the show. Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Oh, wow. We're just going right right into that, aren't we? Uh, <laughs> um, We're recording this on a Wednesday instead of a Tuesday, and we need to wrap this shit up so I can edit it and go to bed. Yeah, no, I. That's that's fair enough. I think the only the only thing is that Ohio State did get a commit in basketball. Yes, yes. They got it in in state uh, forward Alex Smith. Uh, six foot nine out of upper, uh, upper Arlington. So right, right in their backyard. Absolutely. And we, we, we talked, did we talk about Philip Bell during a previous episode? I think so. Ohio State gets an did. offer from wide receiver Philip Bell. If we did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did. We did. Yes. Okay. Yes, we did. That kind of almost finishes the class. Offer, no commitment, Jared. Huh? No, Philip. Philip did commit. We're talking about the wide receiver, two thousand twenty. Philip. Philip Bell, wide receiver, out of Cal, out of California. Yes, yes. He 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 did a verbal commit. Gave us an offer. He gave us. Did I say offer? I meant if I if I said offer, I meant commitment. Um, I don't know what the hell I said, and then since it's recorded, I'm not going to defend myself that hard. Because I could just so easily be proven wrong. But yeah, he committed. Um, aside from like another offensive tackle, Ohio State's recruiting class is kind of done. I'll get the timestamp from Patreon in like three hours. Don't bother. I don't <laughs> care. I misspeak sometimes. It's fine. Um, so yeah, right, again, okay. aside aside yeah. from getting another offensive lineman or two, I think I think Ohio State's recruiting class is almost done. Now they probably are gonna have to pick up another corner because offered might flip. So we might go back into the market for another corner. But other than that, I think recruiting class is almost done already, and it's September 4th. All right. Anything else in Kyle's corner? All right, that's it. That's the end. Of, uh, that's the end of the episode. Tonight's ending music brought to you by a Cleveland-based band called Signals Midwest. If they're not from Cleveland, they're from Akron because sometimes I don't know which bands come from which towns. If I'm being honest, I mix those two up a lot. But uh, Signals Midwest from at least Northeast Ohio somewhere. Uh, name of this song will be West Side Summer. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, sports local podcasters. Once again, these are Signals Midwest. <laughs>